Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. We are gonna learn how to make circular grids on the iPad to use in your symmetrical designs. When I'm drawing my symmetrical designs, I like to have a circular or radial grid in the background. Whether I'm drawing them on paper or whether I'm drawing them on the iPad, I like to have that grid to help me get the symmetry into my designs. Over time, I've developed quite a library of these grids, and I do have sets of them available on my website, both for printable and for digital, but I often get asked how I make them. I've made them a variety of ways. I do make them by hand on paper using a compass and ruler. I've also made them quite a few different ways digitally. I can use Illustrator, pretty much any program that you can create shapes, and has measurements. I think the first program I ever made them in was MS Word. But now that we have the iPad, and that's where I do most of my work, it's so easy to create them there. So I'm gonna show you today how I make them in graphic. And then you can take them into any of the other programs you like to use them in, whether it's Procreate or Autodesk Sketchbook, but we're gonna create the grids in the program called Graphic. Now there's probably a few apps that are similar to Graphic. They keep coming up with new ones, but any vector app, it lets you create shapes and it lets you rotate and it lets you measure your shapes. That's what you're looking for. So I'm gonna use Graphic today and I'm gonna show you how to make a very basic eight division grid with the circular spaces at about one inch each. So let's get started on that. When I open the graphic app, I'll be in the gallery and I have a framework folder in there that has frameworks and grids. I want to create a new one with the plus sign and I want to go choose a blank and I want it to be eight inches by eight inches. You can use pixels, centimeters, but I want inches. And then we're going to choose create and it gives us a blank canvas. I choose the eight inches because I want to be able to print it out on regular copy paper on my printer if I want to use it under paper. So we're gonna start by a basic line and we're gonna draw it from the top to the bottom and if I hold my finger down, it gives me a perfectly perpendicular line. It lines it right up with the page. Now I'm gonna go into my ruler and I want to change the geometry and I want the line to be seven inches in length because I don't want it to be the full width of the page. Then I go into a range and align it vertically and horizontally and now it is right in the center of my page. So now that I have this line, I want to rotate it. So I'm going to go into this rotation option and I want to make sure my center, this little orange thing, I want it in the center. So tap in the center and it resets it to the very center of your line. Now see, I dragged it and it rotated from the right place. I just didn't want to do that yet. I can drag that center anywhere I want, but then I can tap in the middle of my line and it puts it right back in the exact center. So now we're going to copy this line, rotating it, you can change this rotation to any degree you want, but we want 45 degrees and hit copy, hit it again and one more time. And there we have a perfect circle divided into eight sections equal 45 degrees each. That's an eight piece grid. So now I'm going to create a new layer because I want to create some circles, some radial circles that come out from the center. So let's start with the outer one. Just draw yourself a simple circle and I'm gonna go in and change the geometry and I want it to be seven inches and seven inches wide. Seven inches tall, seven inches wide, so it's a perfectly round circle. Arrange it to horizontal and vertical alignment. It puts it right in the middle of my page. So now I have a grid with a circle all the way around it. But what if I want these circles to go all the way through the grid? Well, let's draw another one. Go back to geometry and this one we're gonna make one inch by one inch, and again, we're gonna go into arrange, align it horizontally and vertically, puts it right in the center of my grid. Now we're gonna create one inch ones by choosing this scale option. So it does it by percentage. So because I chose 1% or one inch, I'm gonna choose 200%, which will give me two inches. So I want 200%, 200%, and I'm gonna choose copy. Make sure you are on the right circle. And make sure the center is right in the middle there. Now copy it and see how it copied it. Now it also scaled up the line width, so I have to go in here to stroke and just change it back to two. That's what I'm gonna go with with all of them. 
So there we have a two inch circle in the right spot. Go back to your one inch circle with the selection tool. Choose the scale option and now we're going to go 300% by 300%. Choose your check mark. Make sure that you're on the right circle and it's centered and copy. And again, it scales up my stroke. I just have to bring that down to two. So we're going to keep on doing this. Make sure that you select the one inch circle in the center and then you're going to want to scale it up. And each time you're going to scale it by another 100%. So now we're going 400% and it's going to make it a four inch circle. So hit copy and then we go back into the information and change the stroke. You can always check your geometry, which is the ruler option to make sure that the sizes are going upright. But just by our eyeball, we can tell these circles are going up one inch at a time. So this will give you a grid with one inch uh, differing circular radial lines and eight divisions. You can have any number of divisions you want because when you rotate that line, you can choose any percentage. You can do 30%, um, you can do 60%. 60% uh, will give you six divisions. 30% will give you 12 divisions. So you can create any divisions that you want and you can also create as many inner circles as you want. So we did one inch and did one inch intervals. If you wanted half inch intervals, you would choose 150% and 250%. You would add those ones in. So now that we have it, what are we going to do with it? Well, let's save it and we'll go back into our folder that's in our gallery and we're going to select choose the grid that we just created. Now we're going to share it. Now we can do this a few ways. We can, we have many options here. One, you can send it to an app. Sometimes this works. It depends on the app. I prefer to do either copy as image or save into photos. So if I was to save it into my photos, it would go right into my camera gallery. If I was to copy it as image here, see, I can include the background or not. I prefer not to because I just want it to be a, a transparent grid. So now it's on my clipboard and it usually works in other apps, not all apps, but most of them. If I were to save it to my camera roll, you see here, I get a choice of scale. I have image resolution, which I've chosen 300. It usually sets it to 72. I like 300 DPI and I can again, choose to include my background or not, which I don't. And then I can save it and it'll be sitting in my camera roll now. So I also copied it to my clipboard. So I have two options here. Now let's see, we're going to go into procreate and see what we can do with it here. So let's create a new canvas and I'm going to choose, see, I could just create it out of my clipboard, but it's not very big. So I'd rather create a canvas and bring it in and upsize it. So I'll, I'll choose my regular eight inch by eight inch, 300 DPI canvas. And then I'm going to go into the wrench tool and the add insert First, I'll show you insert a photo. You can just pick it here. It's sitting right there. But I want to try my clipboard, so we're going to try paste. There it is. Now it comes in small, but that's okay. We're just using it as a guide. So hit fit to canvas, resizes it right up to your canvas, and then you can just take the opacity down and use it in the background. So you can use it in other apps. You can save it when you do the graphic share, you can save it to your Dropbox as a PDF and you, then you can print it out and use it behind paper like I do when I draw my mandalas on paper. So lots of options there, but that is how you can create your own grid. So have fun with that. I have tutorials on my blog on how I draw using my grids and I also post little video clips on Instagram regularly on using my grids on the iPad in different apps, Procreate, Autodesk Sketchbook. Um, you can also get the full packs of the grids that I use over on my website, ready to go, pre-made for you. I'm also gonna include below a link back to the blog post that corresponds with this video tutorial, where you can find a free download of the JPEG image of the grid that we just made in this video. So thanks for joining me on this tutorial and we will see you next time.